Lecture 9.3, Taylor's Theorem, Error Analysis for Series. Taylor series are used to estimate the value of functions, at least theoretically. Nowadays, we can usually use the calculator or computer to calculate directly. An estimate is only useful if we have an idea of how accurate the estimate is. When we use part of a Taylor series to estimate the value of a function, the end of the series that we do not use is called the remainder. If we know the size of the remainder, then we know how close our estimate is. For a geometric series, this is easy. Example, use 1 plus x squared plus x to the fourth plus x to the sixth to approximate 1 over 1 minus x squared over the interval negative 1 to 1. Since the truncated part of the series is x to the 8 plus x to the 10th plus x to the 12th plus dot dot dot, the truncation error is the absolute value of x to the 8th plus x to the 10th plus x to the 12th etc., which is x to the 8th over 1 minus x squared. When you truncate a number, you drop off the end. Of course, this is also trivial because we have a formula that allows us to calculate the sum of a geometric series directly. Taylor's theorem with remainder. If f has derivatives of all orders in an open interval i containing a, then for each positive integer n and for each x in i, f of x equals f of a plus f prime of a x minus a plus f double prime of a over 2 factorial x minus a squared plus dot 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 plus the nth derivative of f at a over n factorial times x minus a to the n plus the remainder after n terms as a function of x. The Lagrange form of the remainder is r sub n of x equals the n plus 1 derivative of f evaluated at c over n plus 1 factorial times x minus a to the n minus 1. This is the remainder after partial sum s sub n, where c is between a and x. This is also called the remainder of order n, or the error term. Note that this looks just like the next term in the series, but a has been replaced by the number c in the n plus 1 derivative of f of c. This seems kind of vague since we don't know the value of c, but we can sometimes find a maximum value for the n plus 1 derivative at c. If m is the maximum value of the n plus 1 derivative of x on the interval between a and x, then the absolute value of the remainder after n terms as a function of x is less than or equal to m over n plus 1 factorial times the absolute value of x minus a to the n plus 1. This is called Taylor's inequality. Note that this is not the formula that is in our book. It is from another textbook.
Example 2. Prove that the summation from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k x to the 2k plus 1 over 2k plus 1 factorial, which is the Taylor series for sine x, converges for all real x. We use Taylor's inequality. Since the maximum value of sine x or any of its derivatives is 1, for all real x, m equals 1. Therefore, the remainder after n terms as a function of x is less than or equal to 1 over n plus 1 factorial times the absolute value of x minus 0 to the n plus 1. Or the absolute value of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. If we take the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression, we get 0. Because as n approaches infinity, eventually we're multiplying the denominator by a larger number than the x that we are multiplying in the numerator. So the series converges. Example 5. Find the Lagrange error bound when x minus x squared over 2 is used to approximate the natural log of 1 plus x and the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 0 0.1. We have f of x equals ln 1 plus x. f prime of x equals 1 plus x to the negative 1 f double prime of x equals negative 1 plus x to the negative 2. f triple prime of x equals 2 times 1 plus x to the negative 3. This looks just like we are constructing the series. So f of x equals f of 0 plus f prime of 0 over 1 times x plus f double prime of 0 over 2 factorial times x squared, plus the remainder after the second order term. Or f of x equals 0 plus x minus x squared over 2 plus r sub 2 of x. On the interval negative point 0.1 to positive point 0.1, 2 over 1 plus x cubed decreases, so its maximum value occurs at the left endpoint. So m equals 2 over 1 plus negative point 0.1 cubed, or 2 over point 0.9 cubed, which is approximately 2.74348422497. Using Taylor's inequality then, r sub n of x is less than or equal to 2.7435 times 0.1 cubed over 3 factorial. So r sub n of x is less than or equal to 0 0.000457, which is the Lagrange error bound. We check our work. If x is 0.1, our calculator gets for ln 1 plus x 0.0953102. Our approximation is 0 0.095, so the error is 0 0.000310. At the other end of our interval, if x equals negative 0.1, 
the calculator gets negative 0 0.1053605. Our approximation is negative 0 0.105. And our error is 0 0.000361. The error is less than the error bound. So the error bound gave us a good approximation of the maximum possible error. Euler's formula. An amazing use for infinite series. We start with e to the x equals 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, etc. We substitute xi for x, and this i is the familiar square root of negative 1. Now we have e to the xi equals 1 plus xi plus xi squared over 2 factorial, plus xi cubed over 3 factorial, and so forth. We expand the numerators to eliminate the parentheses. But now we recognize some things in the numerator. For example, i squared is negative 1. i cubed is negative i, and i to the fourth is just 1. So simplifying, we have e to the xi equals 1 plus xi minus x squared over 2 factorial minus x cubed i over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial plus x to the fifth i over 5 factorial minus x to the 6 over 6 factorial, etc. We notice that only every other term has an i in it. So we factor out the i terms and we get two series now. e to the xi equals 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6 over 6 factorial plus, etc., plus i times x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial, etc. We recognize the first part of this equation as the series for cosine. And the part in the parentheses we recognize as the series for sine. So we can rewrite our equation as e to the xi equals cosine x plus i sine x. This is Euler's formula. It will show up next in the last chapter of multivariable calculus. Now we can go a little further if we let x equal pi. We have e to the i pi equals cosine pi plus i sine pi. But cosine pi is negative 1 and sine pi is 0. So we have e to the i pi equals negative 1 plus i times 0. If we add 1 to both sides, we get e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. This amazing identity contains the five most famous numbers in mathematics and shows that they are interrelated. This is known as Euler's identity, although it is also sometimes referred to as Euler's formula.